This is quite intriguing. It's a very old battery called a Leclanche cell. And this was basically the first zinc carbon battery, so to speak. And these were used in stately homes in the United Kingdom where uh, they had maid call systems. And when you press the button to call the maid, it would power a bell and a little flag would indicate which room service was required in. And they generally had a stack of these either in a cupboard or just sitting in the attic of the, the building. And they contain a zinc electrode, a carbon and uh, uh, manganese dioxide, I think it is, the crystals in this, uh, electrode, which is, the, it's all contained in a pot. And then the pot itself had a wet electrolyte. It was basically filled up with a solution of water and ammonium chloride or sal ammoniac to give it its other name. And if I uh, doodle what's actually down here, Where's the notepad? So, the cell was invented by Georges Leclanche. So it's Leclanche uh, cell. And its voltage was roughly 1.4 volts. And it consisted of the glass jar, the pot, Uh, and carbon electrode in that pot, which would come out the top like this, and at a terminal on top. Uh, what have I got? I've got one here. Yep, here we go. Uh, so here's the carbon electrode, which is kind of, I think it's sealed into the top with a sort of pitch, I'm guessing. It looks like pitch. Uh, I'm not sure how they've actually attached the... Uh, what looks like a brass, probably brass, might be steel, uh, terminal, it's quite corroded, uh, into the top of that. But, um, so there's the, the carbon electrode anyway. So that's uh, carbon. And then that was filled round in the pot with uh, manganese dioxide. And that's what this looks like. It just basically looks like chunky grit. I, initially, I thought it was just more carbon, but it is apparently manganese dioxide. And that basically, although I'm making a real mess here because these things are quite dirty, that basically fills the rest of this pot up. And then it was filled with the liquid electrolyte and then the zinc electrode was just stuffed in. And the zinc electrode was the anode and the uh, carbon electrode was the cathode negative. So um, the ceramic pot appears to have two holes at the bottom and it also has, on the top of this, it's also got two little bits of pipe have been poked through. Uh, I'm guessing that's just so that the air can flow out and the liquid can flow into the bottom when it's first put in, because otherwise it would take a long time for the um, electrolyte to soak through this sort of porous pot. And these things, they had a modest resistance, and their main weakness was that if you tried to draw current for a long period of time, I mean, they, they were used uh, not just for the call systems, but also for uh, telephone systems. And if the call went on too long, the current that they could supply would gradually drop until the call became unintelligible. And uh, when you break the circuit, they sort of, they recharge, so to speak. They, they just sort of chemically regenerate in, in a way. I'm not sure that regeneration is the correct term, but they recover is the best way to describe it. So that's a uh, zinc. And the liquid in here was ammonium chloride. Am I still in shot? I think I am, yep. Ammonium chloride. Or as they called it back then, sal ammoniac. Which has lots of uses, uh, ammonium chloride. And I have to say, when I stumbled across these in an old attic, they, most of them were broken. Uh, you can see this one's got a crack up here, and that's what most of them are like, and they were absolutely stuck in the, the dried electrolyte because all the water had evaporated, and it really must have been a huge quantity of the ammonium chloride they put in this because it really was quite a, a high sort of level of the powder. It must have been really quite cloudy and messy, you know, just basically. Uh, they probably just kept adding it during maintenance. And I'm guessing as another element of maintenance, they might occasionally scrape the electrode. However, latterly, uh, they came up with what they call the dry cell, which we're all familiar with, like the D cells, C cells, AA, AAA, whatever. 
And they were based on the same technology, except that the ammonium chloride was initially made into a paste inside. And they were called dry cells, I mean they weren't dry because it was paste and wet inside. But it was still a lot drier than a big glass jar slopping around with liquid. And uh, that was a... You know, that was a step forward. But then latterly, it still had that weakness that, you know, they could, couldn't could deliver sustained current for any length of time. And then they added initially zinc chloride into the ammonium chloride in the cells and it boosted their performance. And then they just replaced it with zinc chloride completely. And that's when you get the uh, the standard mo- modernish zinc chloride cells, the ones that just leak everywhere. They're terrible. Um, and they that also boosted the voltage up to 1.5 volts and uh, just gave them a better sort of uh, ability to deliver high current. And then, of course, we've got alkaline. However, the manganese dioxide has found its way into other technologies, including lithium battery technology. And it's, it seems to be an ongoing chemical in the, in the power generation industry. It seems to have other good electrical characteristics uh, for electrodes. But, um, so there you go. If you ever see one of these uh, in an attic, uh, don't worry, I mean, the, the voltage is 1.4 volts. It's not going to fry you when you touch it. Although I have to say, when I first saw these in the attic and all the sort of, it was very sort of Frankenstein. It had all the sort of, the wires were all sort of spiralled uh, round someone's finger or something like that just to actually jump between the cells. I'm actually just looking at the, this wire is, it's copper, but it's a coated in a sort of waxy fabric material. Uh, definitely a sort of woven strand uh, covering here. And then it's kind of, I'm not sure they've embedded it in. It looks as though they may have soldered it in or maybe drilled a hole and then just punched it in to actually close the metal on the wire. But, um, so if you ever see them in an attic, uh, that's what they are. They're a Leclanche cell, one of the earliest um, batteries, basically. So um, quite interesting devices. <laughs>